Today I want to go ahead and show you my workflow on how I went about retouching this photograph and I'll also show you the settings I used. Um, just real quick before we get started, if you are new to my channel, if you go to my channel Michael J. Bauer Photography on YouTube and scroll on down, you can find other photography tutorials right here in this segment. And if you scroll down just a little bit farther, I have this one called social media marketing. So if you are looking at making money with your photography and prints, this is a really good segment of videos to go through to basically help you get up and get started. Okay, up here on the top also, you'll see the subscribe button. So be sure to click that so you get the latest, greatest notifications when I do upload videos. I have a lot more really good tutorials coming down the pipeline and I also have a really cool Southwest trip I'm taking off on. So I'm gonna have a series of uh, photography adventure type videos coming out too. So stay tuned for that for sure. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, this photograph, which I took up at Copper Mountain Resort in Colorado, this was uh, last winter on a snowy night and it was pretty cool. There was a big, a bunch of light snow coming down, but it was really cold where it's kind of creating crystals. And then the effect it created was this cool looking beam of light came shooting across these buildings right here. So when I was looking around for some good compositions on this night, I ended up climbing over this mountain of snow where they plowed to. And I got to the spot, shoved my tripod into the snow to try to get it stationary. And then to show you the settings I used, after several tries, I finally came up with this setting, which worked great for this photograph. And I went for 13 seconds, my aperture at 7.1. For those of you who watch past videos, you know I try not to go below that 7.1 aperture when I'm shooting buildings, because once you do drop below that 7.1, it can create uh, not as a sharp looking photograph. ISO 400 seemed to work really good for this. I tried to keep the ISO a little lower to keep the noise down. And I was using my Tokitna 11 by 16 f 2.8 lens on this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on the retouch here. So let me real quick show you the before and after. So this is the raw photograph I did right here. And then this is the finished product after I did a retouch in Lightroom CC Classic here. So I'm going to take you from start to finish on how I went about doing this. So let me get hit that reset button. Okay, so the very first thing I want to do is bring the exposure up just a little bit on this photograph to help bump it. Then I'm gonna come down here onto the highlights and I'm gonna take these way down. And what I'm trying to do is get these lights where they're not too extreme looking, but they give a kind of a nice soft look. And then I'm gonna take the shadows up to about, yeah, let's go about 20 or 32 seems to work pretty good. Then I'm gonna hold my option key on my Mac, which is your alt key on Windows. So I'm gonna hold that down, click under my whites, and I'm gonna take this over to right here. And I'm just gonna barely blow these lights out right there, just to make them pop a little bit. Same thing with the blacks. I'm gonna bring the blacks down to the negative. Eh, let's go about negative 20. Now what I wanna do is come up here to the graduated filter. I wanna have the effect of lighting up the top and retouching the bottom because these are two extreme differences going on here. So let me click the graduated filter. I'm gonna hold my option key down and then hit reset. Maybe take the exposure up to about 23 and I'm gonna make this filter I'm gonna drag it up so basically everything from this point down is gonna affect this photograph right here now I'm gonna come over here once again I'm gonna bring the highlights down even a little bit more now under clarity I want to go ahead and bump the clarity up a little bit take the dehaze up just a smidge and I'm also gonna pay with my saturation right here so I'm gonna take that up to about 20 and then sharpness I do want to sharpen these buildings up quite a bit so let me take this up to about 50 Looks pretty good. It really sharpens these buildings. Let me drag this up just a hair more. Once I feel pretty good about that, I'm going to hit done. Now, once again, let's go ahead and just click the graduated filter one more time. I'm going to keep the exposure around 23. I'm going to this time drag, click, and I'm dragging down from the top. And I just want to work on the sky on this one right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and bump the exposure up a little bit more. Maybe pull the clarity down just to kind of smooth it out on that one. So I'm taking the clarity all the way down to negative 100 right here. It's kind of another neat way of kind of helping out any kind of noise that might be in our photograph. And then we hit done. Okay, let's come down to where it says clarity, vibrance, and saturation. I'm going to bring the clarity up just a little higher, maybe about 10. The vibrance, let's just pop that up to about 15. And I'm actually taking this, the overall saturation down to about negative 5. Now scrolling down, we want to go down to noise reduction, 
which is under the detail tab. So if you see the detail tab, just click on that. You should see noise reduction. This one does have a little bit of noise in it. So I'm gonna take it up to about 45. Seems to do pretty good. Now, once again, be real careful not to go too high on this noise reduction because it'll make your photograph look really pasty. And then it just doesn't look that great. Okay, under the lens correction tab here. So if you just click once there, we're gonna enable profile correction. And as you can see, it's flattening out the photograph there really good. And then remove chromatic aberration. I also like to click that on these types of photographs where you do have a lot of light. Okay, under the transform tab, if you just click on that little icon there, we'll click auto and that seemed to work really good. So basically the tripod did slip just a little bit. I never did re-level it. So when I did do this shot, it made it kind of unlevel. So just by clicking, show you the difference there. That's before and after, before and after. So basically Lightroom does a really good job leveling this photograph here. Okay, the last thing I wanna to do to this photograph, I just wanna make it pop just a little bit more. And I always like to do that with, uh, I'm gonna start with the brush here. So I'm gonna click on the brush. Once again, I'm gonna adjust the exposure up just a little bit. And I'm gonna paint some of these little darker areas. So let me just kinda, I'm just holding down my left key on my mouse, just painting here. Then I'm gonna come back over and bring the exposure up just to make it pop just a little bit more. Then I wanna go up to new. So I'm creating a whole new brush. And I'm going to scroll my wheel to the size I want. I'm going to paint a little bit on top of the bridge here with the snow. And let me crank that exposure up just a little bit. Now let's go to the radial filter. I'm going to take the exposure up and I want to make this building pop just a little bit here. So I'm making little circles. And then some of you that might have watched some of my past videos, you can see I like to do these a lot. Just, just going ever so slightly makes your pictures pop and people will just tend to stop on your photographs wondering how come yours looks so much better than a lot of the other ones. This is usually my secret little weapon right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna do one last big radial filter. I always like going right over the main subject here. So let me get this lined up where I want it, the size, and then I'll bring the exposure up just a smidge and bring the clarity up just a hair more. Once I'm feeling pretty good about that, I'll hit done. Okay, once again, let's check out the before and after. So here's the before shot. Here's the after. As you can see, it just made it pop a lot more. So anyways, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, definitely hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And we'll catch you guys on the next video. You guys have yourself a really good one.